Those in the room, I see behind the camera, there's 500 people to the back of the hall. Everybody raise your hands. Engineers, nobody wants to raise their hands. So uh, good afternoon all, those of you here in Makassar, uh, South Sulawesi, I think it's South Sulawesi. <laughs> and uh, those of you attending from uh, all over um, ASEAN, uh, thank you for attending. Congratulations for making it and lasting till this afternoon. So what we have now is a bit of a, of a relax, a chillax, have you, uh, as we say. It's a casual conversation. Just ignore the jackets because uh, this is a casual out. This is casual wear for us. Um, we have a interesting mix of uh, mod of uh, people for today. Uh, so we hope to bring this session. Uh, so this is a episode two of the Sembang Chilex Regional uh, Series. We hope to bring this session as a series of episodes talking about various engineering concerns in the region. Um, so we will continue this program in uh, both actual and online mode so that everybody can join. Today's uh, program, we are focusing on the challenges of engineers and engineering away from the capital. So without further delay, I would like to introduce the three people that we have here to, um, to share their ideas and to uh, keep me company up here on the stage. First, uh, we'd like to invite uh, 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 engineer Pak Habibi Razak from PII. Okay, uh, so this session will be both in Bahasa and English. And if we, if we can figure out how to speak Russian, we'll do it in Russian as well. Uh, questions can be in any languages, but I will pass it through Google Translate. If I do not understand Google Translate, I will make up the question. So uh, we have Pak Habibi here. Should be good in the camera. Uh, he is the executive director for PII, oh, sorry, of PII. In addition to that, he is a country director with 18 years plus experience stationed at uh, SMEC Jakarta office. He's previously worked at uh, Tractor Bell as LNG and gas project director, senior project director, sorry, senior project manager, and business development all based in Jakarta. So he has a uh, insight about working in uh, urban areas and we, he, We'd like him to share his thoughts about working um, outside the urban areas as well. So welcome, Pak Habibi. You. Second one, we would like to introduce uh, another engineer. Uh, please come on stage. Well, we don't have a stage. Engineer Raza, uh, Abdul Raza Yaakob. So Engineer Raza is a highly skilled drilling engineering consultant with over 25 years experience. He has worked with both local and multinational companies specializing in drilling engineering. He is now a uh, professional engineer with practicing certificate. I thought it was a, okay. Primary focus on project management for well decommissioning projects. Uh, he also has the position of one of the vice presidents at the Institution of Engineers Malaysia, of which I am wearing the jacket. And yesterday I was actually confused with the Air Asia uh, service representative, as engineer Razak will explain to you later. And he is also advisor to the oil, gas, and mining technical division at the Institution of Engineers Malaysia. So welcome engineer Abdul Raza, and then don't confuse Ajab Raza with engineer Habibi Raza, please. <laughs> they are actually countries away, literally. Last but not least, I would like to introduce the third person of the panel. That will be professor uh, engineer Tri Haryanto. So prof, if you can attend, uh, attend with us, please. He is, uh, he is uh, very local. He is the head of Geotechnical and Geo-Environmental uh, Laboratory, Department of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, Hassanuddin University, Indonesia, which is located here in bright and sunny Makassar. So ladies and gentlemen, this is our panel for today. So what we'll do is, I might sit down at some point in this discussion, is that, um, uh, okay, I need to stop. Right. So um, we'll plan to run this one up to round two. So the idea is that uh, we have a, a session of a set of questions. We'll give the panelists a chance to uh, give their ideas, maybe five or uh, five plus minutes. And then if the rest of the panelists want to um, chip in, then you are open to do that. Again, I am the moderator. Just, just treat me as a piece of the furniture. Just don't try to sit on me, please. So first question, we will um, ask engineer Raza because he just has to be first on my list. 
So to get the ball rolling, we'd like to ask him, what is your experience working in rural NG areas? Actually, I know because I used to work with him in a rural area. Were you bored? Which I know as well. <laughs> Did you finish reading Tenggelamnya Kapal Van Der Wijk by uh, Prof Hamka? Uh, perhaps a quick tour of the trials and triumphs you encountered and how your involvement changed humanity's quality of life. So over to you, Engineer Raza. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Uh, thank you very much for having me as a panelist uh, for today's session. Uh, so um, to answer the question that you have, um, at the beginning of my career, uh, I actually uh, was based over in Kertih, Terengganu, which is about at that time, it was like about six hours drive from Kuala Lumpur. And um, that was considered as the offshore division of ExxonMobil. And uh, it is, of course, away from Kuala Lumpur, where uh, the HQ of ExxonMobil was. So um, I guess um, the first five years of my career, it has been a very uh, important part uh, to shape me into what I am right now. Uh, I, to me, it is a really important uh, part of my career because uh, it basically solidify me as a person with technical skills, operational skills, um, and it basically uh, provides me with a, a better environment into learning uh, what it uh, supposed to be. Uh, but tapi one thing for me, um, uh, away from the HQ means away from uh, the big bosses. Uh, because whenever that you are away from big bosses, the promotion is not as um, well received. Uh, I, I, I think... Uh, all of the younger generations right now, you all will, would understand uh, why basically it is important to be right in front of the uh, big bosses in order for you to climb the corporate world. Uh, but uh, I guess we will discuss further. Uh, uh, but to me, overall, uh, your career is what you built. So whatever that you think would be best suited you, uh, that is the way that you want to go with. Okay, thank you. Okay, Engineer Raza uh, finished early, so I don't know what to say, right? Uh, so, uh, he said he was away from big bosses. Um, so, you know that uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission will be after him soon. And I did work with him before, seriously. He can tell you stories about being chased by a tiger? <laughs> Or was that somebody else? Monitor is it? Okay, Biawa as well. So, um, away from big bosses, okay, away from big bosses and early career is important and uh, make of your career as you will. So, moving on, that is the Malaysian perspective of uh, of uh, of uh, working away from the center. One of the things that you also miss when working away from center, perhaps if you uh, just graduated from university might be away from your references, from your resources, from your uh, people used to copy your notes from. So not that we copied from Engineer uh, Habibi, but we would like to ask the question. In the urban world here, even in this room, engineers have access to databases, calculation engines, and access to human resources, especially through the AER and the engineering fraternity. Maybe think of engineering as a service. Would our counterparts, especially those seen sent to less connected regions of the world, be able to function effectively without this type of support? Should they bring slide rulers and logbook tables? How should we ready our engineers when we send them out to the field with limited support, either as part of a structured job or as an ad hoc quick response team? So your, your uh, insights, Engineer Habib. Thank you. It's a tough question anyway. Yeah. I think as engineer, when we graduated, yeah, as a fresh graduate, I always push them to encourage them to kind of uh, start their career from the rural side. Why I said so? Because uh, 
when you work uh, in the rural area uh, away from your parents away from your mentors away from your friends that is going to be the uh, the big challenge for you once you can face all these challenges i believe in the near future you can step up into uh, more kind of a, uh, to be promoted as uh, engineer uh, all the way up to senior engineers even project managers level yeah this is exactly what i have done when uh, i graduated i started my career uh, at the one of the mining companies in South Sulawesi. So that is quite far away from Makassar. It's around uh, 600 to 700 kilometers from Makassar. I work as a junior engineer, yeah, more doing uh, design of the mining infrastructure, bridges, uh, roads, and uh, tunnels, uh, wet ore stockpiles, structural steel work uh, at the process plan uh, area. From there, I, in parallel, I also build my project management capabilities instead of just doing uh, design works, instead of just doing a kind of a, uh, calculations at the office. So it is very important for the engineers, not only just sitting in the office, yeah, engineer Wata. I think you, you have to gain more experience. You go to site quite often. Lah. You see what the contractors are doing how to perform the uh, construction uh, at the work site how to learn the construction methodology or this construction sequence the commissioning process so you have a uh, great understanding so you just don't you know kind of uh, just imagine what uh, you are doing uh, in front of the laptop when you're doing the calculation you need to have kind of a visualization is that the design that you have done? Would that be really fully implemented on site? Yeah, yeah. That is the question. Uh, firstly, that I always question whether my engineering work package, whether my my design, my drawings, yeah, when released for tender, would that be fully implemented by the contractor? In reality, in fact, there were some modifications to the design that I've done, which means that I need to be more familiar what the contractor is doing, what is really the requirement on site. Then we go back to the office. We started to do uh, perform the design yeah, for the projects. And when you are in the rural site, you need to understand uh, or be more familiar with the local culture. Yeah. For instance, uh, here in Makassar, we have certain uh, character, yeah, as orang Makassar, yeah, atau orang Bugis. When you go to Aceh, when you go to uh, Sumatra, the culture can be different. So, how can you interact with people uh, multi ethnics yeah? Yeah, you need to work with them. Either they are will be your subordinates, your peers, or your supervisors. So it is very important not only to work as individual, but also we also working as part of the team. Yeah, I think that's the second uh, uh, fundamental that you need to to be aware of. Yeah. The third one, when we were in the rural uh, side, sometimes we are facing the challenging on the lack of the uh, internet connections, so things like that. Yeah. We are quite keen to implement uh, digitalization, automation, but the problem is when we are trying to access, uh, we don't have the internet uh, availability on that on that area. So nowadays, when you go to Jakarta, we, when uh, you see the contractor is doing uh, digitalized uh, construction, yeah. Like uh, the engineers also, the supervisor also doing a digitalized quantity surveying. And then uh, uh, they, they review the, the design. They make comments of the drawings. Yeah, not by kind of a handwriting anymore. Uh, they work in one platform. 
yeah and everybody can do revision can do the design review process through that platform yeah yeah it's called a uh, digitalization internet of things so all these things i think uh, you are all young engineers should be more familiar with when we are dealing with building information modeling artificial intelligence and then uh, augmented reality geological information system yeah all those things that you need to be more uh, uh, capable and, and uh, particularly for government project government project uh, in my hometown is not uh, involving a complex uh, infrastructure maybe just a small bridges or small road for the communities so sometimes yeah engineers who are working in the rural side it's quite difficult for them to uh, get the international uh, certification level because they don't have that complex experience that complex jobs so i encourage also uh, the young engineers here not only working here in somewhere in their hometown in makassar but also they need to be more working uh, internationally in um, multi complex uh, project so you gain the experience you can uh, get to the level of insinyur professional media and then you can apply for uh, asian charter professional engineers and asian engineers register as well I think that's it for me thank you pak bibi um i think okay that was quite a bit there so i think the first part was about um severing your umbilicals with your i would say your previous life being more independent and then i think pak bibi you mentioned something uh, uh, mentioned about uh, learning from the site uh, not being blinded by new technology go out and smell the diesel oil diesel fuel <laughs> don't smell don't, don't sniff it too hard though that can be quite uh, this is not a this is not a, a su supporting sniffing diesel fuel please and then we were talking a bit about uh, being uh, understanding and interacting with the local culture um, which is always part of uh, mankind and humanity and uh, we need to make the best of it um, number three was okay the other one was about digitalization and digi the digital infrastructure um, things change you might have to be uh, this is a different type of hybrid some of your work might be uh, on paper and some of it might be on pit so that's something you need to think about and last one was a uh, government I think it was government projects and the complexity of the jobs that you take on so that you can further develop your career by the way, after, after this, we will have a mess of quest, a time for questions. Um, we can get the online participants to ask uh, questions. And even the people in, in this room can ask questions as well, since you have a bit of a diverse, um, diverse panel here. And talking about diversity, let us move over to uh, Professor Engineer Triahayanto. Speaking about the... Um, severing um, umbilicals just now we we also need to design not design okay that's a good idea <laughs> we need our engineers to function as uh, as uh, maybe one-man business units able to function whether in the deep green or if you get lucky in the deep yellow sands how would you suggest academic institutions provide resources training or engineering help uh, help kits for our engineers at large um, a personal example, uh, I think engineer Rise Up might remember, Malaysia's Dewan Bahasa and Pustaka prepared a, a, a dictionary, Bahasa Dictionary, translating between engineering terms, uh, between Bahasa Melayu and um, English. So we learn about, well, that's the first time I saw what the Injap was, but anyway. So I think the question again, over to Professor uh, Engineer Trihayanto about uh, the roles of academia in preparing our engineers for working away from urban areas. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very interesting questions. So since I was, uh, I am a academician. So uh, in the academician point of view that um, how we prepare our uh, future engineers from our side. 
because now in Indonesia there is a two kind of uh, education for engineers. For for us, uh, university we prepare uh, formally for the engineers, but later then after that they go to the PR, PII, to get the a, a professional certificate. So our our job is only for uh, academia before they go to the field after their uh, graduation time. So now in Indonesia we have a uh, uh, since like a uh, uh, almost five years in uh, educational ministry they launched there is a uh, some uh, one uh, programs they call it uh, Indonesia um, Mas Merdeka Belajar. I don't know in English term because we only use it in Indonesia, in, uh, Merdeka Belajar. So what is the Merdeka Belajar? Merdeka Belajar is the, uh, we need to provide uh, two credits, 20, 20 credits for each student to take outside of their uh, uh, subjects. For example, for civil engineers like me, so they have to take another 20 credits outside of the civil engineer subjects. So this is challenging uh, 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 process actually, but also there is a problem in that, especially for civil engineers. We have to give uh, our student go to the field, uh, go to other field, yeah, everywhere. They they can go to the bank. They can go to anywhere for twenty credits. But some uh, 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 we 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 found that. Uh, Actually, this program is quite good for non-engineering uh, faculty, like uh, for social uh, humanity or law is good. But for engineer, engineering uh, ac academics, it's not uh, because we, we lose 20 credits within this program. But anyhow, uh, we still <laughs> accept this program. So we, we must accept because already announced uh, nationally. So we, we must accept. So what we can do is uh, we just uh, find, try to find uh, not so specific subjects, like more general subjects, like uh, 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 for example, in Indonesia, we have uh, like uh, KKN, I don't know in English KKN, like uh, public work or something for the student before they graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to go to some village or some place for two months or one and a half months and then do for social work with the local people. So we choose that subjects uh, to replace the 20 credits and, and other things. So there is a one uh, uh, a program in, uh, in academic uh, ministry, uh, uh, education ministries. So another thing also in, uh, for example, in my university, especially in uh, engineering faculty we have <clears throat> we have a, uh, a such kind of program uh, call it lbe laboratory based education so we are we are uh, we are trying to train our students before they graduate they uh, at, at least they have a one year in uh, uh, working with the group so after they reach uh, like uh, six semesters or seven semester, they will go to the uh, like a research group. So what is the purpose of this uh, method? Uh, we, we want to uh, train our uh, students before they graduate, uh, how to work in a group. Because in that uh, lab-based uh, education system, they have a, a, a group of students contains of uh, doctoral students, master students, and undergraduate students. They work together with the same uh, research topic. And then we hope that uh, by doing the uh, research uh, group together, our students can have uh, like ability to work in group. Because we realize that whenever you graduate and then go to the work, uh, go to the uh, job, so you have to have ability to work with somebody. At least you have a own company, so you are boss in that company. But if you must work with somebody, so you have to have ability working with uh, somebody. So that's that's uh, uh, one kind of uh, strategy to uh, provide our student uh, skills before they go to the 
uh, field of or go to the uh, job, for example. So another thing, uh, uh, we did uh, a lot of effort to uh, updating our curriculum. So uh, as close as with the what is the uh, uh, in the reality or in the current uh, projects. So our students, we hopefully we have, uh, uh, we hope that our students can get the latest technology and then the latest information of the and the real world outside uh, of the campus. So for this moment, this one I can give you some uh, answer. Okay, sure. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, actually, I saw the interview of Minister of uh, Education from Indonesia uh, in uh, being interviewed by a student about the Madeka Belajar. I think yeah, it, yeah. it is an, a, an excellent program uh, because it gives you the capability to choose uh, whatever that uh, really interests you. Uh, I think in the, the new generation uh, that we have right now, uh, a lot of the skills that you need is the skills on how to live, you know, on how to survive. Uh, one thing that I can share with, um, in one of the assignments that I have when I was younger, much, much younger, was... Yeah, you're, you're still younger. <laughs> <laughs> still younger. <laughs> Only, yeah, much, much younger. Um, yeah, um, what the uh, my boss did was just to send me over to Hasim Saud over in Algeria. Yeah. Um, Hasim Saud, you just live in a camp area uh, along with the rest of other contractors to actually complete the job. So you are alone over there and you are supposed to do a specific job um, and you don't have help. How do you survive in that kind of condition? This is where the survival um, instinct will come in. And I guess this will be um, the, the, the skills that you get when you start taking the courses and thinking for yourself. Um, I also did uh, the um, a, a course, a capstone course, field development plan, which is part of a petroleum engineering degree requirement. And uh, the, the, the purpose of the course is to make sure that all the students are able to work in a team, in a multidisciplinary team. Um, and each one of them will need to show, other than you know producing uh, a, a teamwork, but each one of them is actually um, evaluated on individual capability to actually survive in that particular course. So uh, that is the kind of courses that makes you uh, able to stand on your own. Um, there, there is no other way of surviving other than start thinking for yourself. Yeah, thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, um, Engineer Raza. Scaring our engineers back to the uh, urban areas because they might get sent over to the middle of the... Uh, yes, wherever, wherever that is. You can Google it if you want. So <laughs> let's talk about something a bit closer. Maybe the question in this case would be to... Uh, actually, this question it might be both to um, engineers uh, Habibi and Professor Tri uh, Hadianto, because engineer Raza uh, chicken down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, behind the scenes discussion. Uh, so, in line with UN SDG uh, Sustainable Development Goals, I uh, I think <laughs> I would posit that infrastructure projects, an example would be sustainable mass transit, would be a better bang for the buck investment. Better road transport is key for fuel, fuel, food security, and zero hunger. Poor rural transport condemns the poor to stay disconnected and poor. Thank you, Chat GPT, for giving me these sentences. So my question is, how do you make such engineering endeavors tempting to our engineers? I think uh, but Habibi mentioned just now that maybe these projects might be a bit sim might be depends might be too a bit simple for you to develop your uh, career. So how? Uh, is my view correct? Can we gussy up or make these projects more attractive to send our engineers to work on what my people might think not not bleeding edge, cutting edge technology, 
but the type of engineering you do just to keep the wheels turning and the grease going. So I um, open up to both our uh, engineers or all three, um, whether what would you think about how to make these type of engineering endeavors, uh, the bread and butter of engineering, tempting for engineers and letting them go out to the rural areas to work on them. So gentlemen, uh, whichever one of you would like to answer first. <laughs> okay, let me start answering. <laughs> Not that gila kuasa, but 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 I guess uh, one thing if you uh, if you go through um, I am a YouTube channel, we do have one of the Sambang Chilex um, area about um, dulu saya engineer. So what that uh, what that program actually uh, puts together um, all of people who used to be engineer but they follow their dreams and they do something else. So one thing that we can pick up from that particular program is that engineering education plans you to be able to work on your own and chase whatever that you want to do the best thing that you want to do in life because you don't have to be an engineer for the rest of your life. If you feel that you want to do something else, engineering ed education actually have provided you with that capability to branch out and do something that you really like. So check out the, uh, that video. So in any situation, engineers, um, I think many of us who has worked quite a while have been in any uh, some of the projects where we are thrown to a certain situation or certain places where the uh, facilities are minimal we are the one who will need to figure out how to make things work if we need to build roads then we build roads for example uh, for drilling projects yeah Drilling projects, we want to drill in right in the middle of uh, hutan belantara, you know, jungle. So how do we want to do that? We are given that particular spot, <laughs> that particular spot right in the middle there, uh, and you are way <laughs> there. And how do we get there? How do we bring supplies over there? How do we bring people over there? You have to think about it, and you have to create that. Um, facilities in order for you to work the project. That is the work of a, an engineer. Yeah, same situation. When I first started my career, actually, uh, we cannot be picky. Eh? I mean, wherever the jobs assigned to you, you have to do it anyway. Whether simple job, uh, then uh in the urban area or we need to deal with kind of a complex job uh, away from uh, technology away from uh, friends away from mentors yeah yeah for instance when i was asked to do uh, site investigation for a hydropower project so we need to go to a uh, project site yeah to perform the site investigation, yeah, geotechnical drilling, and then uh, hydrological survey, and all these things, topographical, uh, uh, topographical survey, all these things that we, we have to do on site. No choice. If your boss asks you to do so, then you have to go. However, if you got that experience, then I believe in the future that you will you know, uh, learn uh, from it, then that will be your basis to step up to be more uh, kind of uh, uh, agile, to be more mature as as engineer. Yeah, what engineer Isaac mentioned that uh, it is our choice whether we still want to be a professional, uh, still want to be engineer uh, working for the company, or we create our own. Uh, business yeah on our own yeah so uh, you need to change from uh, kind of uh, 
kuadran ya. Ya, from kuadran A to kuadran B ya. Ya. Like me, uh, I'm still comfortable uh, working under uh, payroll ya, paid by the company. But in the future maybe uh, I need to think about whether I need to create to establish my own company. I think Pak Razak is already done it ya. Yeah. So he has the capability to do so. So as engineers, you have to choose whether you want to get paid by the company still under a payroll slip or you want to pay all your staff yeah as you are the owner of the company yeah uh, anything else i need to add i think yeah for the time being but prof to yeah small so um according to my experience also um i usually uh, give my students a lesson about how to train their engineering sense Again, sense of engineers, I usually say that you have to train your sense of engineers because without sense of engineers, so when you are in the field and you have some problems, so if you don't have this kind of sense, so everything is done, finished. So you cannot solve the problem in the field. So I usually uh, ask my students to, okay, let's try your, your sense of engineer. For example, I give some problems. Because um, even I am a, 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 a professor in the university, but I still have a field experiences. So, for example, I have uh, experiences in the, maybe Pak uh, Habibi previous company in Inco. Yeah, I have six months I work in the dam uh, over there uh, for six months, something so. All the and other other big project also I have experience of that. So all the experience I bring to the class to my students. So this is I face in the uh, uh, field. So what is your opinion about this one? So I I I encourage my students to use their sense of their feelings how to solve the problem in the fields because according to my experience. The sense of engineers is uh, the, the, sometimes the main point also to solve the problem. Yeah, you cannot go to the books in the field. Yeah, you cannot go to the books. Uh, no, no, just forget it. Everything, just use your uh, a sense to solve the problem. That's why the engineers is uh, made of how the the engineers is made for solve the problems. Okay, so I think that one so. Yeah, uh, I usually ask all my students to uh, to train their sense of engineers to solve the problem, especially in the rural area. So no communication, no uh, 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 facilities, no computers. So what you what you should do, what should you do in that area? So you have to use your imagination sometimes. So now I re I have a recent uh, projects now in um uh, in in this area. So I have uh, some uh, grant from uh, international grant. So they, ha they they asked me to design some uh, trash trap in the river, but we don't have any design. This is the first time in Indonesia also. So we don't have any design. So we just go to the field and then feel the feel the uh, situation there. Oh, okay, we can design like this. Now uh, the project is running now. Maybe they will be finished in uh, another two months from now. So, but uh, what I want to say that we have to go to the field and feel the uh, uh, the the atmosphere of the projects, and then from that we can uh, find some solution on that. So, that's one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Ba. So, um, I think we'll wrap this up with one more general question, and then uh, we'll open the questions to the floor. Um, which one would be a good one? Ah, okay. How about this one? I guess for everybody as well. Um, we now, um, Ascend, we're now moving towards a triumvirate of engineers, engineering technologists, and engineering technicians. Um, I would think that all three of them would be useful in the field as they have different skills and different responsibilities and I guess different uh, availabilities, different numbers as well. Supporting and maintaining ruler engineering efforts. What would be your take? Is that something? I mean, just general about having all three, uh, all three engineering adjacent fields in the field. <laughs> That's bad English. Um, so, 
what would what would be your maybe this take uh bah, 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 maybe you might start first and then let raza sweep be the be the sweeper for this one okay yeah so, lucky in in malaysia that you uh, have three categories yeah engineers technologists and technician so you can certify these three categories under uh, asean engineering register yeah here in Indonesia, we only uh, certify the uh, the engineering degree, uh, not yet for the technician and for the technologies, the skills. Yeah, but the skills, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, what we call a vocational education, yeah, which is equal to uh, uh, technician or technologist, to my understanding. Yeah, yeah. what we have, yeah. Um, from my experience that the diploma uh, graduate or kind of a diploma tiga, we call it in Indonesia, they are more uh, hands-on, more uh, skills on tools, more skills on the technology. Yeah? Uh, while uh, engineers is more on the problem solving, creative thinking, and all these things. So it should complement uh, each other. When we go to site, when we perform the project together, Normally, this uh, technician level or technologies, they do the the site surface uh, very very well. They can be very good in uh, the implementation of GIS. Uh, they can be better on how to do the measurement using the the topographical survey using the to total station. All those things, yeah. While we are engineers, we are more analytics. Uh, we are doing the that uh, what we call the data analysis based on the data collected by by the diploma tiga, yeah, we call it or a technician or a, a technology technologist level. So it should be complementing each other, even in 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 big projects uh, like what uh, we are doing in in Jakarta. Uh, we have several staff. Uh, non-engineers level yeah they are working on the project as a uh, uh, kind of uh, foreman general foreman or supervisors level not engineers level they are even to me even even sometimes uh, better than uh, fresh graduate or, or or young engineers so they should share the knowledge together they should share the experience together so they can be more uh, kind of uh, complementing each other uh, toward the successful of the of the project if you're not doing so then the difficulties that i'm not sure that the project will be will be a successful project in the future thank you thank you pa and still um, looks like that uh, i guess uh, from your view indonesia is still um is uh how, what's the word is willing to get uh, some sort of certification for these other levels of engineers so that they can i guess be more um, excited to work together um okay thank you yeah oh, one, one more prof yeah i nearly forget for engineer qualification we have uh washington accord yeah agreement for the vocational prof we will sign the uh, agreement within the Dublin Accord, or say, sorry, Sydney Accord, Sydney Accord. So our vocational uh, program will be recognized, will be qualified by this uh, Sydney Accord in the near future. I think the Ministry of uh, Higher Education is working on it. Yeah. That's just for information. Thank you. Oh, okay. So uh, about the certification of our engineers. So um, in Indonesia, we have uh, many associations. For example, I'm a geotechnical engineer. So our association is Soil Mechanics, uh, Association of Soil Mechanics something. In Indonesia, we call it H-A-T-T-I, Hati. So and many, many associations in Indonesia. So uh, in, in, in each uh, association, they uh, uh, give a certificate of uh, ability. For example, I'm a geotechnical engineer, so my association will uh, give me uh, if I uh, go uh, go to the test and then 
if I pass, so they'll give me that uh, uh, certificate of ability. So in Indonesia, we call it SKA or SKK now. They change it to SKK now. So without this certificate, we cannot go to the uh, job because it's a, a, a requirement for uh, uh, apply to job, any job in Indonesia now. So uh, for example, uh, I have experienced many uh, times that uh, some company or some government invite me as a, 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 a source uh, for their problems. But the first thing they ask me, do you have that certificate or not? If I don't have, so I cannot uh, join with them. So now in Indonesia like that, even the academic, academician like me, so I have to have this kind of uh, certificate. So in also in the uh, tender processing, so all the uh, human resources should have the SKK or SKA. Without that one, they, they will not pass the tender processing uh, system in Indonesia. So far, I uh, acknowledge like that. So therefore, uh, within the association, uh, so Indonesia, we have so many kind of uh, regulation. So we have to have, uh, we must have the PAI also, PII. Yeah? There is obligation. So we must have, for example, I just apply for IP, I don't know, I got IPM or IPU, I just uh, apply now. Uh, and then I already have also the certificate of ability. Without that certificate and PII uh, certificate also, I cannot join uh, the, the, uh, the work in the field something because it is against the rule, against the law. They, they can sue me in the, uh, uh, because I, I'm working without any, um, official certificate issuing by the uh, uh, government like that. Yeah. So in Indonesia, at least we have the two, yeah? uh, PEE and BSP or something, yeah. BNSP. So the, the, this guy, these two organization issue uh, certificates. Um, so for example, in PI, I, IP or IPU, IPM, IPU, in the uh, association, they also have uh, like a, a specific uh, certificate. So that is, we need to have uh, this kind of certificate before uh, applying a job in Indonesia right now. So maybe uh, uh, about the vocational. So uh, in Indonesia also, they have uh, some certificate also for uh, uh, D3. I mean, uh, like a polytechnics, I graduate from polytechnics. No, there is not a full degree like a, a, a sarjana, a bachelor, before a bachelor, like a three years in the a college or something. There's also a certificate uh, for ability. They call it vocational uh, certificate, different with the uh, bachelor certificate. So the two kinds of in Indonesia. So far, I, uh, I have the information about that. So thank you. Uh, okay. So I'm a sweeper. So basically, I will have to cover everything. Okay, the, 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 the topic <laughs> the topic that uh, we are looking at uh, is about engineering technician, engineering technologist, and engineer. So if that um, is the case, then each one of what I mentioned just now has a different set of work that you need to do. This applies to the wonderful world, yeah? But when you are out there on your own, you practically are all three, yeah? Say, for example, if I'm given a project um, to launch the database, um, drilling database at a certain location. So I will be the one, the technician who connects the computer, I will be the technologies who will put in uh, all the um, codings that is not working, uh, the changes of the coding whatsoever. I will be the one who basically will develop the process guidelines and also uh, showing the clients on how to make use of it. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but... 
But in real world, whenever that you are given a certain task, you basically have to complete it. And I guess that's the reason why as well, we Asians are very well loved in the outside world. Whenever that we perform work, we basically don't um, really make excuses not to complete the work. We basically get things done. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tri Engineer Raza. So, with that bombshell, we'd like to uh, finish up the question session. Uh, sorry, the panel session here. Now, we would like to focus on you, those in the room and those out in uh, chat land or virtual land, Zoom land. So any questions you have for the panel here? We have an academician. We have um, too many titles, but I don't want to say. <laughs> we have a, uh, uh, what was the word? Somebody from industry Indonesia. And then we have uh, Raza, his own category. So do you have any questions that you, you'd like to ask? You can ask them in uh, Basa or English or some other language that the panelists can understand. Thank you for a nice discussion from our three speakers just now. It's a very good discussion. <clears throat> when my, my career started from a designer engineer, included drawing, yeah, a drawing, a detailed drawing of the design. I was in engineering division at the time. And then I was also monitoring the publication of the design. At the time, uh, it was a firefighting. It's a form firefighting. There was no problem until the publication finished. <clears throat> The problem came when we uh, testing, running the testing, the try out. There is no, there was no technical problem. Most of uh, social problem. At the time, uh, the people. Um, what the what you call it the sword broke a sword and then uh, come to us yeah because of uh, our uh, form split into their land their uh, rifle <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> as well when i was in project manager of uh, hydropower plan. There was no technical problem that's so serious. <clears throat> All the problem is about was about uh, social problem. Yeah. So uh, to part three, how you teach your student about how to anticipate the social problem uh, related to you said just now sense of engineer because there is no syllabus there is no in syllabus about social problem you know uh, also may, uh, maybe uh, for for parasak do you have uh, experience like that about the social problem my second question, second question about uh, technology. <clears throat> you know that uh, the, the growth of uh, technology development right now, uh, maybe you know about AI, artificial, in, artificial intelligence. When I was a design engineer, I uh, manually drawing yeah, the structure, how you anticipate this uh, kind of new technology about uh, AI to uh, include it in our uh, 
engineer uh, engineer teaching or engineer experience thank you very much okay pak uh, sar i think i met you several years ago i think five or seven something from bumikarsa i think ah, okay so i'm still young because i can remember <laughs> okay thank you for the question so very interesting question so um actually now uh, our uh, students especially for engineering uh, faculty uh, generally they don't have this kind of ability how to interact with the people in the for example in the projects or in the field so therefore uh, in the in the class sometimes i ask them to uh, doing some research, research about the anthropology anthropology is uh, uh, how to uh, uh, socialize with the people for example i, I have a, a, a real uh, experience about that one so usually when we send the contractors to the uh, field for doing the projects so the local people will come to the contractors and asking for the job okay so without this ability how to communicate with the local people how to uh, 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 socialize with the uh, local people so your project will not going smoothly they will uh, give some troubles all the all the time they will give some problems for example like security or everything so i told my students not only learn about the engineering topics but also learn the social uh, uh, problems also how to interact with the people so uh, yeah all the projects i uh, have so i told to the contractors please use the local people otherwise your project will not going smoothly so it is a real condition yeah yeah this is according to the experience so i touch my student I teach my student about this one so don't 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 think about the engineering uh, uh problem only but also the social problem also because in the field i think uh, engineering problem and the social problem like a 50 50. sometimes social problem is 70. i have experience in the uh, uh, some projects in this city we want to make some uh, 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 projects, but the local people reject that projects. So we cannot do anything. So the owner already pay us some amount of the like uh, down payment and that, but we cannot do anything because the local people reject these projects. So without any human interaction, so this project will be uh, stopped right away, I think. So this is uh, uh, the, the topics I teach my students. Okay. Oh, I I was <laughs> okay. Um oh engineer Raza is just exploding to give you some of his comments, but I but he will have to hold it until the next uh Chilex session. So thank you, panelists, for your time and your uh, willingness to share your ideas. And hopefully we've inspired the young ones, we've uh, calmed down the old ones we've irritated the ones which are the same age as us <laughs> and um we've got uh and um uh, i don't know i don't know how to end this well <laughs> thank you all for attending thank you pa for 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 your support thank, thank you pa. thank you and then uh thank you all and then we'll hand over the session back to the uh, actual people who are running this show so thank you assalamualaikum